What is up, everybody? This is Jesse with Keeping a Real Finance Channel that always says your back and tells it like it is. Coming back at you with a fresh video today with the Jasmine AMA number three from the Jasmine International Discord. So this AMA happened just this past week. Uh, lots of really good questions were asked, some interesting answers. I think we got some answers maybe that we um, didn't expect on some of these. Some of them we got like maybe some non-answers. And then on some of them, we got some information that we didn't know at all. So a lot of really interesting things kind of came out of this, but wanted to give you my whole take on it and uh, kind of break it down from here. So here we go. So we're kicking it off right here with the uh, Jasmine third AMA here, um, by the way, hosted by Tycho. So big shout out to him and the entire Jasmine International uh, Discord, the mods, et cetera, and everybody who participated in this. So the AMA was hosted with Hara, uh, Jasmine CFO, and we basically kicked it off by throwing him a little bit of a curveball saying, hey, uh, we're going to give you a list of questions, but then we're going to open it up to the various social media influencers from YouTube, Reddit, Twitter, et cetera, uh, to ask you questions. And in response, Hara gave us a little bit of a curveball as well, which was this statement here. So I'd like to read this to everybody. So he says, Dear Jasmine users, we're delighted to release this statement to address your recent concerns about Jasmine on the Binance, and he's referring to Binance US, not the worldwide Binance, but Binance US exchange, and to introduce the development plan of Jasmine Grant on Ethereum and BNB chain. So please rest assured that Jasmine's official team is in close contact with Binance and you can continue to trade Jasmine on the Binance Exchange with confidence, okay? Now, firstly, we would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to all users who care about and support Jasmine. We have noticed rumors circulating in the market recently regarding Jasmine's delisting from the Binance Exchange. We hereby solemnly declare that Jasmine's official team maintains a close cooperative relationship with Binance, and both parties are committed to providing a safer and more convenient trading experience for our users. Please rest assured that the trading of Jasmine on the Binance Exchange will not be affected. We will also continue to maintain close contact with our partners co to contribute to the development of the Jasmine ecosystem. Okay. Now, secondly, he says, we're pleased to announce that Jasmine Grant will operate jointly on Ethereum and BNB chain as well. To better serve our users, we will deepen our cooperation with BNB chain enabling users to experience faster block confirmation times during the grant voting process while significantly reducing gas fees. We believe this will greatly improve the user experience of Jasmine Grant and inject new vitality into the project long-term, right? Uh, once again, thank you to all the support and trust in Jasmine. Um, you know, we'll work hard to optimize our products and services to provide a better trading experience for our users. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to contact us, right? Uh, we're happy to assist and improve. So anyways, the couple of things out of this was, first of all, um, as I said earlier, so Har is referring to Binance US was where they were delisted. They were not delisted from Binance, the main platform. And if you haven't seen it, I did a video about the Binance US delisting. And basically the, the conclusion that I have come to is that it's based on trading volume. So the trading volume on Binance US for the entire market was basically one third of 1%. The trading volume on the Binance platform, the worldwide platform is roughly 28% of all Jasmine trading occurs on that. So they were not getting delisted from that one. They were getting delisted from the Binance US platform. Now Binance US and Binance the world version are two completely separate companies. The world version is the one with CZ. Binance US is a separate company, okay? Um, they also didn't give Jasmine a heads up that they were even getting delisted in the first place, which is also what they did to Helium, which was also delisted and didn't know why, right? So there, there's almost a little bit of bad practice there that at the very least, if somebody's going to get delisted, you should probably let them know and put them on like a prob probationary period. Like, hey, you're going to get delisted because of lack of trading volume. We encourage you to tell your users to use our platform. They could have done that. They didn't do that, right? Um, so anyway, that was the first thing he addressed here. Now, the bigger part of this is that to date, um, Jasmine 
has been, the coin itself has been on the Ethereum blockchain. It has not been on Binance. Um, they have a separate blockchain that is for the project, okay? The Jasmine blockchain. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And what he's saying here is that separate chain um, he wants to have on Binance. They want to have it on Binance, and therefore they want to expand on the Binance ecosystem. So that's really interesting. That's a whole new wrinkle that we've never encountered before. Uh, Jasmine coin in the original chain is all Ethereum, every bit of it. It's not Binance at all. So the fact that they want to go into Binance um, is a brand new development here. And he says they're planning on doing it with the Jasmine grant. So this is the ex further expansion, right? Where does it go from here? So really interesting on that front. Now, from there, we wanted to get into the questions. So the very first question here from Dip Metaverse, how many coins will be locked up starting in fourth quarter 2023 for how long? How many will be locked up total? Now, Hara answered this in a way that I don't think he actually answered Dip's question because Dip Metaverse was asking based on businesses locking up coins. So the idea with Jasmine is that for businesses to get access to platinum data, they need to lock up coins equivalent to a value in yen. Um, that's kind of what he was asking. Now, what Hara answered with something completely different. Japan has a very convenient IC card called Suica. So Jasmine also aims to provide a system where users can hold a certain amount of Jasmine coin in their wallets and lock it up, thereby improving its functionality, valuing their data and exchanging it for value. The goal is to create a system that allows users to exchange their data for value. In other words, the lockup will continue as long as the user continues to use the system, but the number of locked up Jasmine coins per user is expected to be small. Now, what Hara is talking about is individual users that may be using a PDL. He is not talking about businesses, which is what Dip Metaverse asked. <laughs> so completely different thing. But what he did talk about here, this Suica card, so this is a card that they use basically to get on and ride the train in Japan. So you have a machine, you load up your card, you print it out, and then you can use that card basically all through the terminal, right? So you could use it to, uh, for the train. As far as I can tell, you can use it to like buy food at like a vending machine. Um, they also have these like little uh, pods there in Japan. You can see these on various YouTube videos. That's It's like the size of an old phone booth and it's got fogged up windows and it's like a pop-up office. So you can rent that office for uh, an hour, a couple hours, wherever you can go in there and take a nap, whatever you want to do, right? And you could use this card. Now he references that card in the sense that it makes me think Jasmine is trying to get some sort of government partnership there to tag into that card. And if they could do that, that would be absolutely huge because that train system runs all over the country of Japan. So. Question and answer are a little bit different on that one. I think that one's a little bit lost in translation, all right? Number two, how many secure PCs have been sold? So uh, from the last AMA, it was 2,000. Hara's answers here was that it was 3,000 have been sold to date. Now, this is behind the current projection uh, that they're trying to get to. They're trying to get to 200,000 by the end of this year. Now, some of that could come in big lump sums, but if you're just, let's say, looking at the average, well, if you're trying to get to 200,000, you need roughly almost 17,000 a month. We're at 3,000 and we're already three months into this year. So they're well behind that schedule of selling secure PC. So they, they need to improve on that front, right? And I would say also, um, just so you know, like, like all throughout Discord, um, everybody can put in these little icons here and then kind of vote on them, whatever they're thinking. Some of these icons are absolutely hilarious. I had a lot of fun with these during the uh, AMA. <laughs> all right. So anyway, here's the next question from IC Amphibian. So any update on hardware manufacturers for products like Jasmine's smartwatch? Is Bork still a partner? So I know IC has been wanting the smartwatch in particular, the IoT smartwatch, right? And so Hara says they are right now in discussions um, with the hardware manufacturer. Uh, we'll be able to announce more details soon. And Borks is still a partner. So that tells me that they are still working on this, right? So still in the works. Next, how many more partnerships do you hope to have in 2023? What industries, right? 
And he says, we're looking to partner with several companies that develop and sell devices, mainly the hardware manufacturers that responded earlier, and about 10 companies that use apps and platforms. Interesting, right? Um, do existing partners already have coins that will be locked or uh, they will yet have to acquire them? And do partners buy coins or are they given to them? Now, Har only answered part of this. He says, partners using data will need to lock up their coins. So Jasmine isn't going to give anyone any coins. What he doesn't answer is if any of them already own coins, which is some of the stuff that we've been wondering, like, for example, tra Transcosmos. Do they already hold Jasmine? I don't know. And he didn't answer that, right? Um, next, where and how is Jasmine expecting to get 107 million data lockers from? Okay, year by year breakdown, country by country, um, service partner, et cetera, right? So Hara says here, essentially that uh, personal data locker is your one and only ID and database that can be connected to many websites and applications using decentralized login mechanism. So it can be connected to websites and applications using a decentralized login, all right? Now we would like to increase this number by connecting to many websites and applications, and it will naturally increase as you use our services. Now he says here, and this, this aligns with everything we've seen to date, that they're still in the demonstration stage. So to monetize and growth strategies are, are changing, right? Uh, we would like to expand mainly in Asia where the population is growing and there is still great potential for development and security, okay? So they're targeting Asia and which countries they're targeting. Um, you know, India, uh, previously they were targeting China. They haven't really mentioned China recently, but definitely India, um, Thailand, Malaysia, Vietnam, Philippines, et cetera, right? Um, next question. So will lock tokens be able to be unlocked at any given time or are they lock forever or a set time? Per hour, they can be unlocked at any time. Unlocking makes it harder to benefit though from data value and the plan is to set lock as a small amount enough that people will not be concerned about the profit loss transition. So again, he's talking about individuals, okay? Now, will there be an updated white paper? So per Hara, we believe that we're progressing according to the roadmap, although there have been some changes from the original plan. We're planning to create a more concrete manual for sharing the SDK API to spread the blockchain with a description of Jasmine's philosophy and principles, right? So the answer there is no. <laughs> there will not be a new white paper, but there may be some more expansion that comes out, most likely if I had to guess on the Japanese website, right? Next question. What's the purpose of various Binance wallets on Etherscan? Why do they hold so many Jasmine tokens? Now, Dip Metaverse is asking this because he's been tracking these forever in his spreadsheet and no one really knows, right? Now, the interesting thing is it sounds like Hara doesn't really know either. So he says, I understand that this one is run by independently by Binance and is used by many DeFi and other projects for the purpose of operating tokens. So he doesn't really know. Basically, it's set up by Binance. And for example, if you look at this on Etherscan, it'll say like Binance 8, Binance 9, Binance 14. What any of them are for? Only Binance knows that. No one else really does, right? Moving forward, do the KPIs, the 2026 KPIs still apply? Could we have a year by year breakdown of these targets, et cetera? Um, do the partners Jasmine already have potentially provide enough access to users to meet these KPIs? Hara says, yes, the KPI will continue in 2023. We already have them using the chain, but our contractual relationships with our partners are not yet good enough. So we're moving forward with these renewals in order to seriously involve them in our business and expand our user access quickly. Of course, we're keen to increase the number of partners and are receiving offers on a regular basis. So what I, the way I read that is that the KPI goals are 2026. They are goals, they've always been goals. There's nothing that means they will happen or they're concrete or whatever, right? Their goals that the company is shooting for that they think they can achieve and they're still doing so. Um, that's what he is saying right there. All right. Now from Auntie Jasmine, who by the way is a man, uh, do you have any plans to step up marketing and brand image for Jasmine, including looking at wider social media presence and improving and streamlining the website currently available? In response, we do not plan to make major changes at this time, but we will make improvements in response to requests. <laughs> and I love this first image here. <laughs> 
<laughs> this kind of sums up, I think, the way a lot of people took that answer. It's like, oh, come on, man. You know, like uh, one thing that uh, I've been saying for months, years, whatever it's been, is that I felt like they need a more consistent marketing, consistent marketing man, uh, message. Okay. So right now they've got the J Japanese site. They have jasmine.global. They have a website for the happiness project. Um, they've got, you know, uh, Jasmine management as a Twitter handle. They have Jasmine grant as a Twitter handle. Hara has a Twitter handle, et cetera. It's, it's hard to get consistent messaging when you have so many different, uh, uh, megaphones for the company, right? Now I would say that I've talked to, um, some people within the community, uh, that uh, have been started to talk about this in a way that maybe the community should put something together here for a more consistent message. And that could be part of it. You know, I think um, part of the disconnect sometimes with Jasmine is it's a language barrier. Um, you know, it's it's a country all the way around the world from a lot of people. We got to kind of like get on the same page, right? And we're all trying to do that. Everybody wants to do that. But even still, you still have these kind of uh, disconnects. And so I think what we would like is, you know, like, something in English that's consistent, that captures all the information that the company puts out there uh, regularly. And now granted, the Japanese site, um, you can just click the button and turn it into English and you can see a lot of this stuff there. Uh, but even still, it's kind of hard to capture everything. So we'll see what we can do as a community on that, maybe to improve upon that. We do have some ideas. Um, next question from Brian. So, how does Jasmine's co-development of their AI agents and AI data analytics compare to the generative AI uh, now available to the public, such as ChatGPT? Do you believe your technology is comparable or do you feel the need to pivot, right? And so Brian's saying is, is your AI as good as ChatGPT? And if not, uh, do you have plans to make it better, right? That's basically it. And so Hara says with the advent of ChatGPT, I believe that AI will be a big wave in 2023 and our AI engineers are working diligently in multiple teams to make that data available. That's a pretty good answer. He's saying we are working on it right now. Um, in the 2023 roadmap, the AI, AI engine is part of quarter one and two. So theoretically that should be developed by this summer and be done, right? Next question is what is Jasmine's role in the Hokkaido ballpark and the smart city itself? Will the WITS entry exit system be used in the ballpark? Will a PDL be required for stadium entry, right? Now, Hara's answer is this. Currently, there is no direct connection between the stadium and PDL. The surrounding cities, including the stadium, are smart cities, and we believe that Jasmine WITS can make a significant contribution to the digitalization of and use of data in the towns that will be energized by the stadium. So that's kind of a weird answer, because to date, everything that we've been told is basically that Jasmine's partnered with WITS for the entry exit system, right? It seems like WITS is the leader on this though for that entry exit system. And Jasmine is sort of a bit of the secondary player, put it that way, right? But Hara makes it sound like it's not, the stadium itself would not be connected to the PDL. And, you know, I guess that part makes sense to me. I think when I've conceptualized this in the past, I've more so thought about the individual who's going to the stadium. So for example, if Jesse's going to watch a baseball game, you know, um, you know, I, I go through the gate, uh, however many minutes before the game starts, right? I sit in the upper deck because I'm cheap. I, uh, you know, like to eat the hot dog at the baseball game, right? I don't know if they have hot dogs. It's a Japanese baseball game. Just saying, <laughs> um, you know, Jesse bought a, a baseball team Jersey, you know, uh, we should, you know, maybe mar think about marketing him another one. Jesse paid for, you know, parking in section, um, you know, uh, triple Z because, you know, he's cheap, w whatever. You know, they sh the way I in conceptualize it is that they should be able to capture the data, all these different data points from somebody who's visiting that stadium. He's saying the stadium itself doesn't connect to a PDL, which sort of makes sense. But I guess I wonder from the individual side, that's where I could see it working. So he didn't really answer Dip's question, but the way he answered it makes it sound like they're not involved in the stadium at all. So I don't know. I think we need to find out more information on that one. Um, but they apparently are in the local area there. All right. Uh, how many major financial institutions are currently using Secure PC? 
And so he says they can't give out the name, but one major one has been using it since the last year. Now that major institution, if I had to bet on it, my bet is the Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corporation, SMBC. My reasoning why is this was the bank that was with Sony when Ando was in charge. And the entire time he was leading the company, they had multiple members from that bank on Sony's board. Jasmine has also been partnered with that bank. That would be the logical choice, would be that bank, okay? Now, could it be someone else? Yes, this is simply Jesse's speculation. But my hunch is that that's who it is, right? Moving on from there, uh, since Jasmine is a PlugNet blockchain, will Jasmine be a data storage option for PlugNet open metaverse platform, futureverse root network? Uh, what I IC Amphibian is asking here is that the JASME um, consortium blockchain that's a partnership with Centrality, part of Centrality's uh, products that it, it offers is this PlugNet, okay? Now, here's what Hara says. JASME was previously developed on the Plug blockchain, but at the same time, the chain was very fragile and unstable. And unless Plug was used as transaction fees were paid, the entire process would stop. It was not in a condition to be used by the largest companies in Japan, including Transcosmos, for their business. Therefore, this is really interesting, using Plug Centrality's blockchain technology as a reference only and using their license, Jasmine has built its own consortium type blockchain with its own engineers to create the current service. So the key thing here is that they're not using it like we originally thought they're using a license for it and they've basically frankensteined it into something completely different right <laughs> and he says here that their intent this is this is the key here right like this kind of takes me back to the beginning with transcosmos a billion dollar company why do they partner with a startup right well he says here it was not in a condition to be used by the largest companies in japan which means who are they targeting the largest companies in japan there you have that, right? So it means that um, they're not using this in the way that we originally thought, but they're using it as a license. They've applied their own engineers to it, and the intent is to use it with the largest companies in Japan. Got it, okay? Um, here's one. As far as the 2023 roadmap goes, are we still on schedule to meet all milestones addresses in the roadmap. Uh, Hara says, of course, we'll promote our business with that intention, okay? Uh, there has not been much of a public mention or backing of Jasmine from the top level management. Can we expect a video AMA with them in the future? Now, there is some of this, it's just not in English. So there are vi videos uh, on YouTube with Sato, that he's in them, as well as Hara. Um, there's one that I covered at one point in time where Har is sitting next to this bear with a light bulb on his head. <laughs> I don't know what show that was, but he was on it. He was there, right? Uh, so they do uh, video interviews. Uh, I have not seen one with Ando, okay? Now, Jasmine, uh, or Hara says here, Jasmine has two top management lines, CEO Ando for the development line and CFO for the cryptocurrency line. That's really interesting. So that means that Hara is the development for the cryptocurrency line, whereas Ando is a development for the, or, or and, uh, sorry, Hara, <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied here. Hara is the CFO for the cryptocurrency side, right? The blockchain technology, all that stuff. Ando is for the development, okay? Uh, of course, we would like to conduct AMAs as needed. So, I personally think that if Jasmine could do an AMA with Ando, with Ando, that would send this project on a whole nother level, all right? An AMA with Ando. I don't know if that's possible, but I think as a community, we should push for that because we, we all love Hara. We've heard Hara, got it. Um, Sato, you know, we we've only seen him on Japanese interviews. I don't I don't know if he speaks English. I really don't know. Um, I'm assuming he probably does because of the high up position he had at Sony. I know Ando does. Um, 
And so if we could get an AMA with Ando, um, even just a published article with Ando in it, um, I think that would go a long way. Now, I fully understand that Ando probably has a packed schedule at all times. Um, and getting that AMA or that interview would be really difficult and challenging. But as a team, if if they really want to um, ensure investor confidence, that that would be one way to do it. You have Ando start talking, right? Um, moving on. This was interesting. Any update on trying to be integrated in Sony PS5, right? So Hara's answer to this was really kind of eye-opening, right? So he says, PlayStation had previously attempted to implement high-speed distributed computing using available resources, but the plan was never implemented. We believe that by using a platform that changes the way data is stored and used, we can solve the problems associated with personal information and change many of the conventional wisdom. So he's saying here that PlayStation did pursue this, but it never materialized. And he's saying they think they have the solution. Interesting. So it's, I mean, obviously per, pure speculation here, nothing in concrete, but if they could make a partnership with PlayStation, that would just be colossal, colossal. And what, what would really be holding them back from that? I mean, with all the Sony connections, I mean, I, I don't know, you know, to me, I mean, think about, thinking about this from a corporate angle would simply be if PlayStation already has their own thing in development or a partnership with somebody else, there's something else in the works and the timing is just bad. Could be maybe why it doesn't happen. But if on the other hand, if, if they don't have that stuff going or if what they have going isn't working, then that's an opportunity for Jasmine. And why not them when, you know, the bulk of this team is former Sony, right? Moving on. What is the update on partnership with Vita PCs and the software being sold on? So Hara says here that uh, they've established a JV with Vita technology and have already started selling our brand of Vita PCs. Um, they are, uh, the company already has many customers in Hong Kong, Taiwan, Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, India, Singapore, and other companies as its commercial basis. By incorporating Secure PC, the company plans to easily improve the level of security, monitor usage to help with repairs, and turn PC sales into a financing transaction through leasing. They want to lease out PCs. Very interesting. You know, when I hear things like that, it kind of brings me to the corporate world where I think of, you know, a large company has a need for 1,200 laptops for 3,000 laptops. They have a partnership with Vita. Vita sends them 3,000 laptops. The, the uh, Software is loaded on there for the Jasmine Secure PC, and we're off and running, right? That's kind of how that would work. Now, that concluded the original part of the AMA. Now, here's some of the influencer direct questions. Here's one here from uh, Icy. Auto blockchain launched yesterday, and the timing seems significant since it's also built from PlugNet as reference. So this is tying into that centrality partnership. Is Jasmi the met metadata link to PlugNet's DEX Auto and its wallet NFT? And will Jasmi utilize Auto and its applications? Also, Masanobu Yoshida, he is the uh, MY in Jasmi, is an advisor for the Altered State Machine. Will Jasmi store ASM AI data? Now, Hara says, thank you for your long-term understanding of our project. The Plug Network responded earlier, but does not uh, currently refer to any specific technology. We are building our own blockchain. And, and this, these, these two sentences are really big here. We're building our own blockchain utilizing Hyperledger Fabric, okay? Their own blockchain. That was a huge thing. Number two, former CTO Yoshida is now, now involved as an advisor. He's he's back, right? <laughs> so Yoshida's back. That I, I think that's pretty crazy, right? Now I always thought that Yoshida was kind of like a hired gun here in this process. I think Ando's the facilitator. I think he brought in Yoshida for the tech side, right? Now he's back. So um that's pretty cool. Moving on, here's a question for me, right? I I actually had a question in the uh AMA. 
Uh, can you please provide more information on the partnership with Booking.com? Is Booking.com planning to use the platinum data similar to the Nippon Travel Agency? And what I was getting at here is that the way I see Nippon Travel Agency working is if I have a PDL and I have all my information in there on the trips I've taken over the last 20 years, uh, they should be able to apply AI to that, to my history, and provide new inferences. Like, Jesse, I see here that you went to Costa Rica in 2008. Have you ever thought of going to Panama, right? Or, um, Jesse, I see here you went on a European cruise, right? Uh, have you ever thought of going on an Asian cruise? Um, whatever, whatever those things may be. That's kind of what I'm asking here with Booking.com. Now, Hara's answer uh, to me um, is a little bit different, right? So again, this is sort of that bit of that translation issue. So he says, uh, thanks for everything. Uh, we're of course working to leverage our database, but as part of our activities to expand the use cases for Jasmine Coin, we've entered into a deep partnership with Binance funded project called Travala. So Binance owns Travala, okay? What it means is that you can use Jasmine Coin to pay for travel. That's what it means, all right? Um, but, um, he does say we're of course working to leverage our database. So I think, I think what he's saying here is simply that this is a partnership where you can now use Jasmine to pay for travel. That's great, but it's not yet what NIP, the Nippon travel partnership, uh, should, could, can be. Okay. And I think that the booking.com one could definitely be that in the future if they can prove the execution of the PDL with travel, all right? So it's not there yet, but it could be, but this is a start having that partnership. And again, it's another Binance connection because they own Travala, right? All right, um, from Dip Metaverse. So our community came across two data exchange platforms, the Japan Data Exchange, JDEX, in every sense. Are those competitors of Jasmine or are you working together? Likewise, how do you plan on being interoperable with other data trading marketplaces globally, such as your older partnership with XROAD Japan, who's using XROAD technology from Estonia? And by the way, if you're hiring, I'd love to work with you. Love it. <laughs> so apparently Dip Metaverse is looking for a job. <laughs> so that was really funny, right? We got 19 laughing at that one. <laughs> so now the way Har answered this was interesting. So thanks for everything. He says, I'm concerned about the outcome of the WBC, but this is more important. Our system is not an information bank. So those other systems are all information banks, right? Exchanges uh, that centralize data. The concept here is decentralized login mechanism utilizing our database. What's important is how the data is used and how to properly understand its whereabouts. I believe that data exchange and information banking could be heavily regulated in the GDPR. Of course, I look forward to working with you as we move forward with our operations properly, right? So he looks forward to working with you, Dip, but he's not hiring you just yet. <laughs> so anyway, you know, Dip Metaverse kind of talked a centralized location for information. Hara is saying it's basically a decentralized login mechanism that can tap into a website or app. Um, so a little bit different. Now, Jasmine US um, asked some uh, pretty good questions here about uh, many early investors purchased Jasmine around 10 cents, 20 cents or higher. How can you reassure early investors they will see a return on their investment, restoring investor faith, bad times is key. Additionally, if you could go into more detail about uh, how achieving the uh, KPI goal of 2026 is possible, right? So he says, I've not mentioned price much, but I will answer here. The first step is to link the database to the wallet. I agree, that's key. We have to have a link between database and wallet. We haven't had that to date. And I've, I've talked about that many, many times. There has to be a wallet, right? There has to be a connection. Uh, this is one of our goals for 2023. Next, we will move on to the phase of linking the exchange value of the data with Jasmine. Again, critical, right? In this phase, we will partner with various data using companies and collaborate with talented AI teams to raise the value of data held by each person to at least $500. Now that is a lofty goal, but it could happen. It could happen with the AI inferences, right? So as a result, we hope to reach target of the KPI. That's basically what he's saying. 
Now, <laughs> these, these things are hilarious. <laughs> you got 14 of these like kind of cringe face right here, right? Lip bite. <laughs> Um, now we did get, you know, so 18 of the cheers and one person's clapping. All right, fine. We, we got Joe Rogan times two. All right, great. Um, but you know, he, he didn't really a hundred percent answer that. He basically said, you know, look, we're, we're shooting for the KPI goal. Uh, the way we're going to do that is to raise the value of data to 500, but we have to do these couple of key things first. That's what he's saying. <laughs> um, now. Here's one from Brian. So what measure is Jasmine taking to address cybersecurity concerns in the autonomous vehicle and drone industry, especially as we migrate towards the fourth industrial revolution? In addition to your efforts in securing and democratizing user data, how will you contribute to ensuring the security of networks supporting level four autonomous systems? Super technical question, Brian. Awesome. So he says, Brian, in autonomous vehicles, this is an area where edge computing, not cloud networking is per in particular, is utilized. Edge computing is useful for instantaneous decisions that are too slow for the cloud, and we have identified the challenges of how to make pre-programmed processes faster, to make more instantaneous decisions, and how to maintain a high level of security to do so. You know, what I can think of here, like autonomous driving, right, like the, the computer, the car needs to make decisions fast. That's kind of what he's saying. Also, you know, if, if you think about, um, I think it was maybe Fetch talked about this and really Jasmine could do the same thing. If you think about like a smart billboard, right? So what if there's a billboard on the side of the road that picks up on your car coming by and then targets an ad directly to you? So it sees Jesse driving up down the highway, right? And the instant ad pops up and it says, um, you know, hey, Jesse, you really like to eat a tropical smoothie. There's one right here. I go, hey, tropical smoothie. And then, you know, there I go pulling off, right? That's kind of what he's saying. It's making that instantaneous decision to say, hey, here's something you like. It can send you that way. Or, you know, if you think about it like um, just in autonomous driving, the vehicle needs to be able to make decisions, do it fast. So this is how it's doing it now. To expand on that, though, he says, we're currently preparing to release a IR about licensing on how to manage unattended autonomous devices to ensure that their KYM is done correctly and they're not processed in any way that is not intended by the owner. With unattended processing devices, the issue of who is the owner and the handling of data when rights are transferred is an issue that we're working to provide a solution that can solve. So that was pretty cool. A pretty, pretty interesting answer on that one. Kionism here from uh, Reddit, Reddit moderator, right? So he says here, will all Jasmine coin holders be able to deposit and lock their Jasmine coin to receive Jasmine X? Or will there be any restrictions? And are there plans to use Jasmine X for more purposes in the future after the Jasmine grant process is finished? So Hara says, we'd like to promote Jasmine grant widely and have received a lot of expectations from the international community. Of course, with the wallet, all users will earn the right to do so, and we hope that the results of the vote will result in many projects with attractive ideas. The use of Jasmine X is currently limited to this. We do not plan to issue many tokens, and the essence of Jasmine is to increase the value of personal databases. Now, the way I read this, the way I'm conceptualizing this, is that he's saying, let's say we've got a list of ideas, right? a list of ideas with how to expand the Jasmine ecosystem with projects that um, people are on board with. He's saying basically that you could vote on that project uh, with your Jasmine coin and however much you're locking up, you could get Jasmine X, right? So basically he's sort of talking about um, incentivizing governance uh, to vote on proposals is what he's saying. Proposals, though, of new projects. So I don't know if any of us really know exactly 100% what this looks like yet, as this has kind of been a new idea that has come about with the Jasmine grant, but stay tuned on that one. That was a really interesting answer there. All right. Now, lastly, I was able to squeeze in one final question here for the end of the AMA, and the question was this. Can you please provide us an update 
on Ken. This is Ken Taro Mayura and his efforts to expand Jasmine to Silicon Valley, USA, right? So last year, Jasmine announced that Ken Mayura was brought on board uh, to help uh, expand Jasmine into the US. He is a former Sony employee, uh, currently uh, headquartered in Silicon Valley, San Francisco, California, right? Now here is Hara's response. We, we haven't had anything to date on this, so this is brand new. He says, Mr. Mayura is currently working on two main projects, okay? One is a business partnership with the latest tech company in Silicon Valley. We are in continuous discussions about this. That's really interesting. I have no idea who that could be, but apparently he's working on a tech company partnership, okay? The second is to sell Jasmine's blockchain integrated laptop to the US market. We are working with the Avita team on this. Now he says, this is not a business that will produce results overnight, but we have been able to approach a great number of companies with him as a starting point. So what they're doing is they're springboarding off of his relationships in that area. And he is basically acting as facilitator. That's pretty, pretty neat. I got to admit that that's pretty neat. I didn't see this. I mean, I know that's kind of like what the goal of him was, uh, but to date, the only thing that we've had concrete with Ken Mayura is that he attended a uh, NFT blockchain conference in Japan. We really ha have never had an update on any of his US progress. And here it is. So he's basically working with uh, the latest tech company, whoever that might be. And he's working as facilitator to open doors with the laptop. Now the laptop, remember, hinges on the English secure PC. Because uh, you know prior it's always been Japanese, right? So if we have an English secure PC, that could go a long way here in the US because there are a ton of jobs that have gone remote post COVID, all right? So I think the expansion possibilities are absolutely huge. And there are a lot of companies that would use something like this, right? So to wrap up, that is everything in this AMA. And a big shout out to uh, Tycho, to all the moderators, to Hara, to all the questioners, to everybody who participated in it. Uh, this was probably one of the best AMAs we've had yet in terms of a uh, group participation, we'll probably expand a little further from here. Uh, maybe at some point, like I said, you know, as a community, we can really push for an ando AMA. I would, I would love for an ando AMA. That's, that would, that would be like a crowning achievement if we could pull that off. Um, so who knows? We'll see what happens. Right. But in the meantime, it tells me that, you know, they still got their nose to the grindstone. They're still working on everything. And uh, the pro project itself is still progressing. I did like the recommitment, though, um, with Binance to work with them, cooperate, et cetera. And, um, you know, where I think they have the closer tie is most likely with the world platform, not necessarily Binance US, the sec separate company, right? Um, but overall, you know, some of the, some of the answers that Hara gives are kind of like, you know, lost in translation a little bit between whoever was asking whatever they were asking. But then we learn new stuff. So uh, nonetheless, this was a, a very interesting AMA overall. So anyways, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit the like button. Um, don't forget that I am also on Twitter at KIR Finance. You can find me there tweeting, retweeting. I'm even here in Discord. You can find me here. You can go to my website at krfinance.com, find my financial blog and everything else that's posted there. And so lastly, for a friendly reminder, this is Jesse with Keeping Real Finance. Channel that always says you're back. Tells it like it is. And I will see you on the next one. Later.